somewhere. Just not. Uh, I've got water next to that one, so just don't drink it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm not sick, but. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome. It's so great to see everybody in person. Um, really, um, my heartfelt congratulations to all of you on this wonderful accomplishment. We want to welcome you to the Norm Asbjornsson College of Engineering Spring 2022 Recognition Ceremony. My name is Christine Foreman. I'm the Associate Dean for Student Success in the college. Today, we're gonna celebrate those students being inducted into the Order of the Engineer those taking the pledge of the computing professional. We are also honoring two students that are receiving their international engineering certificate and the three finalists for the Montana Society of Engineers Gold Medal Award. Again, there is much to be proud of and to celebrate after a very long year. Of all the events leading up today and tomorrow's commencement, this is probably my favorite. Um, I think it's a really wonderful way to celebrate graduation by formally welcoming your students into their profession with a visible sign in the form of their ring or their pin. Assisting with the presentation of certificates and rings today will be Dr. Jeff Hayes, Associate Dean of Research, Economic Development and Graduate Education, Dr. Todd Kaiser, Department Head, Electrical and Computer Engineering, Dr. Kevin Cook, Professor, Mechanical and Industrial Engineering, Dr. Craig Woolard, Department Head, Civil Engineering, Dr. John Paxton, head of the Gianforte School of Computing, and Dean Brett Gunnick, obviously Dean of the Narvez Bjornsson College of Engineering. So we'll first hear from Dr. Craig Woolard, who will give you the history and significance of the Order of the Engineer and the Ring. Dr. Woolard? Well, good afternoon and congratulations on your pending accomplishment. It's all nice to see you and your families here. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Order of the Engineer, give you a bit of history about this award and the obligation that it places upon you. So the Order of the Engineer was initiated in the United States to foster a spirit of pride and responsibility in the engineering profession, to bridge the gap between training and experience, and to present the public a visible symbol identifying the engineer. The organization and the obligation it places upon you has its origins in a similar obligation that began in Canada in the early 20th century called the Ritual of the Calling of the Engineer, which administered an oath of conduct that was authored by Rudyard Kipling and who, that stated, quote, here is the engineer possessed of a publicly avowed dedication to the profession and those it serves, unquote. In the United States, maxims similar to those of Kipling took hold in Ohio and correspondence bega began between the members of the Canadian Calling and, then, and the then Ohio Society of Professional Engineers with the intent of extending the Canadian ceremony into the United States. In 1966, a group of U.S. engineers in Ohio began to pursue, pursue establishment of what was then known as, in Ohio as the Order of the Engineer. While this group deliberated, seniors at Fenn College of Engineering at Cleveland State designed and held the first ring ceremony and reception in, in June of 1970, where about 170 engineering seniors and faculty members participated in the ceremony. During that ceremony, each participant signed a creed and received a stainless steel ring on the small finger of the working hand. The second ceremony was, second ceremony was held in Akron, Ohio in February of 1971, which included seniors at the University of Akron and practicing engineers. Since that time, the Order of the Engineer has grown to include tens of thousands of members inducted at chapters established in every state of the Union. Although patterned after the Canadian concept, the Order of the Engineer has differences that are distinctly associated with the United States. The Order of the Engineer, to which you will soon belong, is an independent organization. There are no meetings other than this ceremony, and there are no dues. This won't happen again, trust me. <laughs> the purpose of the organization is to foster a feeling of pride in and dedication to the professions which binds us together. The order is, to sim is symbolized by the acceptance of the obligation and wearing of a stainless steel ring on the small finger of your working hand. 
The obligation to which you will soon, soon subscribe is a composite of several creeds. It emphasizes the fact that we, as engineers, have certain obligations. It promotes honesty and integrity and recognizes that today's engineers are dependent upon their predecessors to gain their skills. The significance of what you are about to say and do might be expressed this way. You are about to say to yourself and the public, I am an engineer. I have an obligation. My obligation is to apply the golden rule, our code of ethics, to the technical knowledge of the world. My obligation becomes the yardstick of my professionalism. And lastly, that my professionalism means to me that I will never ask myself the question, how much do I get out of it? But rather, I will ask myself the question, how much can I give? The symbol of the desire to be a giver is the engineer's ring you will wear for all to see. The ring will say to all that see it, here is an engineer dedicated to the profession and the public it serves. I do appreciate this opportunity to, sp to speak with you about the order of the engineer and the ceremony. And again, my heartfelt congratulations for your significant accomplishment. So now we'll hear from Dr. Todd Kaiser, the Department Head of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Please stand and accept the obligation of an engineer. Using the card provided, please recite with me I am an engineer. In my profession, I take deep pride. To it, I owe solemn obligations. As an engineer, I pledge to practice integrity and fair dealing, tolerance and respect, and to uphold devotion to the standards and the dignity of my profession. Consciousness always that my skill carries with it the obligation to serve humanity and by making the best use of Earth's precious wealth. As an engineer, I shall participate in none but honest enterprises. When needed, my skills and knowledge sh shall be given without reservation for the good public good. In the performance of duty and in fidelity to my profession, I shall give the utmost. Please be seated while Dr. Foreman describes the procedure to receive your ring. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Uh, there's quite a few of you, so we're going to have a process that I'll describe um, to go over as you're formally inducted into the order of the engineer. So I'll ask you to stand by row, one row at a time, and then line up along the side here, um, alongside where, <laughs> where Dr. Hayes is demonstrating. Um, and if I could have um, Dr. Yep, so Kevin and who else? Oh, Todd, you were going to do that for us. Thank you. So you'll see a certificate with your name. You'll sign your certificate, um, and then I'll call your name. You'll walk across the stage to the ring where you'll be met by Department Head Craig Woolard and Associate Dean Jeff Hayes, and they will help you with your ring. You'll then exit out to the right side and go back to your seat. Then we'll call the next row up, and we'll stand, and we'll do all that again. Sound good? All right. First row, please stand up and uh, line up over the left there. Jubair Ahmad, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. Abir Amakalis, Financial Engineering. Zach Archambeau, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> 
Hyundai Noor, Arpali, Bioengineering. Jake Artis, Civil Engineering. Abdullah Bamani, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. Benjamin Bega, Computer Engineering. Nicholas Benson, Mechanical Engineering. Charlotte Berg, Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Kate Berg, Mechanical Engineering. Alexandria Betzweiser, Civil Engineering. Ryan Bickford, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. Victoria Billings, Mechanical Engineering. Isaac Birdwell, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. Joel Bridgman, Electrical Engineering. Cody Brown, Mechanical Engineering. Montgomery Bruins, Mechanical Engineering. Katherine Carlson, Electrical Engineering. Alper Selick, Civil Engineering. Kaylin Clark, Mechanical Engineering. Lacey Clark, Mechanical Engineering. If we could have the second row, please stand and come to the left here. James Clinton, Civil Engineering. Gianna Clinton, Civil Engineering. So if you guys go in the right, then you'll just load up and you won't have to cross over anybody. Thanks. Malachi Koblenz, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Elijah Cook, Mechanical Engineering.
Cash Coda, Civil Engineering. Octavian Kuliak, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Isabel Cuthbertson, Mechanical, <laughs> Chemical and Biological Engineering. <laughs> There's a lot of Emmys out there. Denver Dix, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. Geneva Feist, Electrical Engineering. Cameron Fisher, Mechanical Engineering. Lena Fitzsimmons, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Matt Flanagan, Civil Engineering. <laughs> Nicholas Gear, Mechanical Engineering. Eric Grosvold, Construction Engineering Technology. <laughs> Madison Hagenson, Civil Engineering. <laughs> Alex Johnson, Mechanical Engineering Technology. Tyler Kaminsky, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Tukimi Kamarzal, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Adahan Kilink, Chemical Engineering. Macy Kirkledy, Civil Engineering. <laughs> we can have the third row please stand. Max Kirschenblatt. Construction Engineering Technology. <laughs> Connor Leahy, Chemical Engineering. Keegan Lupton, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Carter McIver, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Jacob Micheletz, Chemical Engineering. Matthew Miller, Chemical Engineering. <laughs> H 
Harley Meisner, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. <laughs> Abigail Murray, Civil Engineering. Lance Nichols, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Megan Oakleaf, Mechanical Engineering Technology. <laughs> Eamon O'Grady, Civil Engineering. Brian O'Neill, Construction Engineering Technology. <laughs> Vanessa Ortiz, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. <laughs> Hakan Oz, Chemical and Biological Engineering. Anuthe Palagema, Mechanical Engineering Technology. <laughs> Joshua Phillips, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Lauren Podick, Chemical Engineering. Wushti Roesa, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Elliot Scheiman, Chemical Engineering. <laughs> Russell Schiller, Mechanical Engineering Technology. Rachel Schubert, Civil Engineering. <laughs> Gabriel Schultz, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. <laughs> if we could have the next row, please stand and come down. Sophia Sefrud, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Kelsey Soltis, Civil Engineering. <laughs> Lucho Stagnetti, Environmental Engineering. Lauren Stanford, Chemical Engineering. <laughs> Jeffrey Steiner, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Kimia Stouffer, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering.
Jason Stump Stoddard, Mechanical Engineering. Alton Burdan Tandigan, Chemical Engineering. Molly Taylor, Environmental Engineering. David Taylor, Computer Engineering. Taylor Walker, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. Mark West, Mechanical Engineering. Jacob Wheeling, Chemical Engineering. Zachary White, Mechanical Engineering. Sophia Wickhorst, Chemical Engineering. Kali Wigan, Industrial and Management Systems Engineering. Marley Wigan, Aerospace Engineering. Barkin Yayalar, Chemical Engineering. Camden Young Scoville, Mechanical Engineering. Michaela Zakchevsky, Chemical and Biological Engineering. Let's have another round of applause for all of our new inductees. I would now like to ask Dr. John Paxton, director of the Gianforte School of Computing, to give the background and lead our students in the Pledge of the Computing Professional. For those of you taking the pledge, this pledge can be found in your program. Thank you, Christine. So um, a little bit about the history and significance of the Pledge of the Computing Professional. The Montana State University chapter of the Pledge of the Computing Professional was established 10 years ago. A professional rite of passage, the pledge symbolizes the entry of the initiate into a position of responsibility. The initiate takes an oath, pledging to act both ethically and morally as a member of the profession. The initiate is then presented with a visible symbol of the profession as a reminder of the responsibilities. A black and gold lapel pin emblazoned with ones and zeros um, is the symbol of the pledge of the computing professional. These binary numbers spell the word honor using the ASCII computer code. Through this public rite of passage ceremony, the pledge fosters professional pride, moral obligation, and ethical responsibility in our computer science inductees. Although there are no meetings to attend or dues to be paid, uh, members of the pledge are expected to uphold and honor the computing profession. The certificate and lapel pin that each initiate receives today will serve as visible reminders throughout your careers. Uh, the computer science inductees gathered today should now rise and um, reading from the program, join me in taking the pledge. All right, so here we go. I am a computing professional. 
My work as a computing professional affects people's lives both now and into the future. As a result, I bear more to society. As a computing professional, I pledge to practice my profession with the highest level of integrity and competence. I shall always use my skills for the public good. I shall be honest about my limitations, continuously seeking to improve my skills through lifelong learning. I shall engage only in honorable and upstanding endeavors. By my actions, I pledge to honor my chosen profession. All right, congratulations to all of you. For those of you receiving the pledge, the pin will follow a similar process to the order. Uh, please stand and line up here along the left. You'll sign your certificates. As I call your name, you'll walk in front and you'll receive your pin from Dr. Paxton. Connie Bernard. Alonzo Darius. <laughs> Maria Gallivan. <laughs> Michael Heidel. <laughs> Lennon Lewis. Sarah Montalbano. Joaquin Monterosa. Alyssa Newhart. Connor Snow. Walker Ward. We would now like to recognize those students who are receiving their International Engineering Certificate. The International Engineering Certificate helps prepare students for the global workforce and to be engaged citizens. To be eligible for the certificate, students must pick a particular country or region of the world as a focus and earn a minimum of 15 credits to that focus. They must also complete an international experience, such as a study abroad program, work, or service opportunity. This semester's two recipients traveled to Germany and Japan. The students credit their experience for making them better communicators, more effective leaders, and better engineers and computer scientists. Uh, receiving the International Engineering Certificate today, Isabel Cuthbertson. and Connor Snow. It is It's my pleasure to turn the podium over to Dean Gunnick to present the Montana Society of Engineers Gold Medal Award. The MSC Gold Medal Award recognizes outstanding graduating, recognizes the outstanding graduating engineering senior each year. Departments nominate the top senior in each program. The top three candidates are interviewed by a panel of Montana Society of Engineers who 
choose a winner and two finalists. The criteria are based on distinguished academic record, leadership in extracurricular activities, and commitment to the practical use of the sciences and execution of engineering work, and the promise of service to the profession with integrity, devotion to highest standards, and a sense of obligation to humanity. This year, we have three outstanding finalists. And can you come down after I call your name? Cash Coda in civil engineering. <laughs> Geneva Feist in electrical engineering. and Lauren Johnsrud in chemical engineering. And there's some other stuff here I'm supposed to read, but this ceremony is not fun enough yet, so we're gonna have some fun. So, <clears throat> this is a graduation celebration, and these three are the top graduates in your class. So let's all give them a round of applause. So um, when we have some other award ceremonies uh, on campus, we all kind of do the drum roll, but we don't have any desks or anything. So we're going to have to do like we do it. The, there you go. There's <laughs> the fourth best student. <laughs> Uh, we're going to have to do like we do at the Bobcat basketball game. So you drum roll like this, right? Okay, they're all oh, looking, they're good. Some of them studied music too. That's about the only music I know is that. Uh, okay, so we're going to do this like they did at the old Thai uh, style beauty pageants and that sort of thing. I'm going to have a, a first runner up, or no, I guess it would be the second runner up. And, and the second runner-up will come and get their plaque. Uh, so the second runner-up and the first runner-up uh, will get a, a, a smaller plaque, and then the, the recipient of the MSC Gold Award gets a little bit bigger plaque. Uh, and I don't know who the answer is, so it's just going to be a random order, okay? <laughs> and, and so, uh, and obviously, you guys are all real smart, so we don't even have to declare who the third one is, right? You got, you know how, you got how this is going to work. All right, so the second runner-up, the gold medal award finalist, Lauren Johnsrud. Right. It's a bass drum, too. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and the first runner-up for the Montana Society of Engineers gold medal award is Genevieve Feist. Geneva, I, I gave her, I said her name on Geneva Feist. So guess what? That means it's Cash Coda, MSU Gold Medal. Celebration, right? I'm liking this crowd. Okay, so this is our graduate beginning of your graduation celebration. That was a squeak. I don't know where that came from. Uh, beginning of your graduation celebration. Okay. <laughs> now, you've got tonight, and I know what a lot of you are going to do. Just don't do so much of it. You don't get to end the graduation celebration tomorrow. <laughs> when I was, uh, God, it was a long time ago, over 40, 40 more than, I'm not going to get the right number. Uh, when I had got my baccalaureate, I almost made that mistake. I think I went to my graduation with the worst hangover I ever had in my life. It was a miserable graduation. Make sure yours is a little more enjoyable than mine was. Okay, so the last thing that we do today, the tradition for this, is uh, to play this game. And at the end of the game, 
all of the graduates, the engineers and the computer science, will be up on the stage with me, and they'll all be wearing a hat. There are hats in the box here, Christine. Hats in the box. Open the box. Hat. Stylish. Montana State University, Norm S. Bjornsson College of Engineering. Hat. There we go. And this is the only place you can get this hat. It's, it's kind of a cheap hat, but it's, this is the only place you can get this hat. Because we're not a rich university. We're not like Harvard or anything. Yeah, okay. So uh, I, I always put this in contrast. So the, uh, earlier this week, we had a dinner for the uh, 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 faculty who were uh, promoted to associate professor or promoted to professor. Uh, and at that dinner, President Cruzado gives them a pin. Uh, did anybody have President Cruzado's pin? We must not have been very good recently. <laughs> She's got a little round pin. I should have had mine on today. A little round pin that says President Seal on it. It's really nice. <clears throat> and you can only get the pin from President Cruzado. Okay? So my hat is like that pin. Right? You can only get the hat from me. Now, I'm going to postulate, though, that next time you come to campus in the middle of February and it's 30 below out, You'll go, damn, glad I have a pat, hat rather than that silly pin. Okay. Okay, so, so the way it goes is uh, I'll ask the graduates to all stand up here in a minute. I'm going to say something, uh, something about your experience here, and sometimes I blend them into my experiences when I was a student your age or our experiences while we were here together. And if that experience applies to you, then you come on down, okay? Now make sure there are no injuries in the coming on the down. So we'll, we'll be careful on the coming on the down because it's not nearly as organized as when Christine organizes it, okay? So then when everybody's down here, okay, we'll have a picture. We'll all put on our hats, okay? And mom and dad get to take the picture of all of us together with our hats, okay? So everybody understand how the game works? Okay, so all the graduating seniors, engineers, computer scientists, please stand. <clears throat> okay, so as I was reflecting on some of these commonalities, I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's almost impossible to reflect very far back in our lives and not think about this crazy pandemic that we have been working through, uh, suffering through sometimes at times. So some of these ideas came from, from that, right? So, and you remember in the spring of 2020, <clears throat> that's when we, in a, like a week, decided the whole university is going online, nobody's coming back to class, there's a lot, a lot, y'all remember that. So there were some interesting things uh, about that experience in that month before we got to the worst graduation ever. I mean, I, we did our best. We tried to make that graduation special for those students, and I hope that we did, but it, it's not the same. Last spring, we were out on the football field, 16 feet apart. It's not the same. You guys are get the first ones that get to have a real Bobcat graduation. I'm like so excited to participate in that with you. But back with, in the uh, online era of the pandemic, uh, a little ways in, I get an email from one of my uh, department heads, and the email says, uh, Brett, uh, um, uh, I forget the faculty member's name. I've got to ma make up a name for her, Susan. <laughs> Susan emailed me. Uh, it was a female faculty member, which makes it a little bit more funny, maybe. Uh, Susan emailed me and, and said, uh, in class yesterday, because it's all on Zoom now, right, all on Zoom, uh, one of the young men came to class without a shirt on, and I wondered about the other parts. <laughs> what do I do? And all the problems I've dealt with as a department head and dean, I never worried about people coming to class without any clothes on. <laughs> and never thought of that. But here we are in the middle of COVID, kids coming to class without clothes on. And I said, well, why don't we just see if he finds his shirt tomorrow? 
And apparently the young man did and, uh, and it was okay after that. And, and so I'm not gonna ask if anybody went to class naked <laughs> because mom and dad are back there. I know none of you will admit that to them. Uh, but I'm gonna ask it, if you, if you came to class in your pajamas, come on down. We may not get very many questions deep. <laughs> Come on down, get, get against back, there's gonna be a bunch of us down here. You can you don't have to put them just before the put the hats on right before the picture. You can if you want to. I mean they're they're better than I described them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said they're softer than I was expecting. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, another play on that 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 wonderful COVID experience that we had a couple years ago. <clears throat> so my department heads and I when we when we went to the nobody. Uh, classes online, nobody goes to work either, right? We're, so we're all at home. We're uh, cabin uh, uh, computers, hauling computers home, getting all that set up. But we were meeting <coughs> every afternoon at 4 o'clock on the WebEx, right? <coughs> so uh, we did that for a while. And then it dawned on me one day that we're about to end, a, end our, our meeting, and I knew there was a beer in my refrigerator. And there might have been a glass of wine in some other people's refrigerator. So I said, hey, why don't we all go grab a beer, grab a glass of wine, come back to our WebEx, and we'll have an end-of-day libation together. Now, I think technically that was drinking at work, <laughs> which, which I, is President Cruzado here? No. <laughs> we were home. We were, we were not on university property. And I'm pretty sure it was at least a few minutes after 5 o'clock. <laughs> so if any of you, in the course of your online studies, realized, uh, you know, this 4 o'clock class would be a lot more tolerable with a glass of wine or a beer at my side, and did that, come on down. I'm getting, COVID makes this easy. Oh, are we running out of hats? Oh, well, I guess we got some down there. Okay, we got a whole bunch over there, okay. Uh, okay, so let's go. Well, let's get out of spring of 2020, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna flash through that next year, because I'm not gonna ask if anybody's in quarantine and stuff like that, because we're gonna have a little more fun with this. So then we roll into this year, right? 21, 22. And I, you know, I don't know how many, but I am a really big Bobcat athletics fan. I love bobcats who run, jump, knock each other down, any of that stuff I like, okay? And so, uh, let's see if we get, if anybody went there. So, <laughs> if there's anybody still standing up there that thought that South Dakota State football game was the most fun football game you ever went to, come on down now. There we go, we got a few more. <laughs> So I picked that one because I didn't know, you know, it, it cost me quite a bit of money to go to the national championship game, but I don't know how many students had the resources to do that. Uh, but that followed by the national championship game, which was a lot of fun too, everything except the final score. Uh, uh, and I remember uh, getting closer and closer to that game, and I'm going, you know, I had the COVID in the fall of 2020. I had uh, uh, 
Pfizer number one, I had Pfizer number two, I had Pfizer, but Lord help me, I was praying I didn't get the COVID before that football game. Uh, and so we had the national championship uh, football game, and there was some fun with the, with the basketball too. And so we'll go to the next one. Uh, and we'll, we'll do this one a little bit. So if you, if you played the YouTube video that went like this, Raekwon crosses the half court line, he shoots it up, it's in from the logo, from the logo. Nobody played that one? No basketball fans? I've got to start bringing mom and dad down then. Oh, there's one. <laughs> My wife and I, we go, we go both to the, the men's and the women's basketball. But the men's just about killed me this year at the end of the season. There were three or four of those games. It just went down to the wire. Uh, the women's basketball team did really well as well this year. They they were they 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 were they but they were a little gentler on my heart. They usually won by a bigger margin, but they they had a great year too. Okay, we got what one two three four. Hmm. There go some of the standbys. Uh, We'll find this. We'll usually start with this, and we'll end with this. So we're going to add to this now because we got a lot of people up there, and so I don't want to just have it be. So if if the subsequent ones apply to you, you got to raise your first your right hand, okay? But I hope I get some of these down here pretty quick. And then if 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 we still got a few up there, and and I, another question, and it applies to you, you got to raise. And if I don't get these all down here, eventually we're all going to be doing the hokey pokey here pretty quick, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So, one thing that is true of an engineering education, it is hard. It is not easy to get an engineering degree. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's heads are going up and down. And it was harder because of this pandemic. It absolutely was. And so I, I'll, I'll pause here for a minute and just say how very proud I am of all of you. This, uh, there may be no other, I'm proud of all of my graduating classes, but what it took for two years for you guys to push through all the things that happened because of the COVID and all the adjustments and all the things that went around that, I'm really, really proud of your guys, you guys. <clears throat> so the next question is this one. And usually this is the first one I ask in this class. This is if you, if you ever liked a class so much that you turned around and took the same class the next semester, <laughs> come on down. <laughs> come, they got some hands got to go up here. Put some hands up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not uncommon. I, I don't know. This was must this is must be a smart class because a few years ago I did that and I got half of them all down here, <laughs> you know. And so that's not uncommon in in, in a tough engineering curriculum to have to, uh, uh, to, to to apply yourself a little better the second time. Uh, but it's a mark of persistence and perseverance uh, uh, that will. Will, will do well over the course of the, your career. Okay, let's see here. What other ones they do? So now we're going to kind of we'll pick up some. We'll get if you um, if you this one's like me. Okay, if you grew up <coughs> in a town of uh, less than a thousand people. And coming to Bozeman, Montana was going to the big city. Come on down. Do we get some? Remember, you're putting your hands up. Anybody got two hands up? Flunked the class, came from Roundup? <laughs> no? no? Okay. <clears throat> if you had a fly over an ocean, I didn't have to do that. I went from Boone to Ames, Iowa. If you had to fly over an ocean to come and attend 
class at Montana State University. Come on down. You guys are tough. Sure. There we go. All right, so if you are a child of an alumni for Montana State. So that reminded me of what, it, so my daughter, uh, my youngest daughter graduated five years ago. It's not easy being in, in this college, right, in chemical engineering. It's not necessarily easy being in a college where your dad is the dean. And so she was out this uh, uh, ceremony, and I started talking about uh, birthing babies, and she said, don't even go there, I'm coming on down. <laughs> uh, Okay, we got four left. Any help from the audience? What about the capstone? Oh. <laughs> After spending 1,400 hours on your capstone project and it failed to function, come on down. This is tough. This is tough. Yeah. That was a couple, a couple. <laughs> All right. We got one from from the from the student board. If uh, I, I did this, uh, <laughs> well, this will reflect on me. So uh, uh, when I w went to school, I uh, I worked in a bar. And when you work in a bar, you start work at like 10 o'clock and you work till in Iowa, the bars close at two o'clock. And uh, uh, you need to get off work at two o'clock, you're not ready to go to bed. So I'd go to bed about four o'clock and then get up at eight o'clock to go to class, that sort of thing. So I spent a lot of sleepless nights. So if you spent, uh, more than an occasional night not sleeping because you were working or studying, come on down. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to squeeze in together because <laughs> nobody's got uh, that wide. Every come in, I'll, I'll be at the front, start filling in behind me. Yeah, get, make sure it's white behind you. Jan, can you get, do you have to go higher? Oh, we got lots of, this will work. Okay, we, we got, <laughs> graduates, we got one, uh, one other thing to do before we take our picture, right? Squeeze closer together, squeeze closer together. Yeah, six feet apart. You get to be by each other now. Okay. Um, so I know that you guys didn't do this all on your own. And there are people up there in the stands that supported you in lots of different ways, particularly with some of the challenge that resulted from what we had to do with the COVID. So let's give everybody up there a round of applause. There we go. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We do have uh, at the bottom of the the stairs outside. There's some uh, uh, some food and, and uh, light refreshments there. Please go down, uh, visit with each other, uh, have fun. See you all tomorrow afternoon.
missed my Oh, okay. Just hang here for a minute. Sounds good. Uh, what do you need? He, he, he missed his name being called, so we need to find his. Uh, what is it? Denver? Denver Dix. Denver Dix. And we need to find his. Uh, what was the last name?